more supportive of certain kinds of economic activity than, than others. Um, and why there are certain inherent advantages to some places as opposed to others. Um, and so part of it is mapping um, different economic activities um, across the country and trying to understand those geographic patterns of why industries and why certain occupations tend to be more concentrated in certain places than others. Um, I've also looked at um, individual um, social network data, um, particularly looking at people who tend to do more creative um, types of occupations, also people who are in more creative type of, types of industries, so artists and that sort of thing, and finding that they tend to have the, the largest, most diverse, and most dynamic social networks of any category of, of person within the economy. Um, I mean, Trying to, think, try to relate that then to local context, obviously having those opportunities to interact with many people and meet many people, many different people um, is, a, is a big part of that creative process and those creative contexts. Um, so that was the work that I was doing when I met Dan. And uh, Dan um, um, contacted us and wanted uh, some help with some data analysis. Um, first, we started on a, on a project for rural eastern Ontario, um, and then there were more a couple of other reports on southwestern Ontario um, and Prince Edward County itself. These were looking at the rural economy um, in these places, really just trying to get a sense of what was where, um, how much of the creative economy was there in, in various places, um, trying to measure it um, from sort of a you know consistent um, methodological point of view. Um, that was, you know, complemented by local case studies as well, which Dan will talk about more um, later. Um, so, just starting off um, very basically, uh, we were looking using the the four types of um, occupational groups um, that Richard Florida's group, uh, the Martin Prosperity Institute, was using uh, for their Ontario um, report, um, and we found certainly that those. Creative um, occupations um, certainly do um, have higher incomes, um, meaning that there's probably a much higher value added associated with that kind of work. Um, so we were interested in, then um, in how does that um, actually look um, geographically in regards to urban, rural, eastern Ontario. So we split it out. Um, and we found that those types of jobs um, were actually growing at a faster rate pretty much everywhere. Um, <coughs> if you see this chart, you can see rural, CA means smaller um, sort of urban regions, CMAs are larger urban regions. Um, we're looking at Ontario versus just Eastern Ontario. So for example, the larger urban regions in Eastern Ontario are Ottawa, Kingston, um, CAs, uh, are things, places like Brockville, Cornwall. Um, but we, we found that uh, those jobs with the, the higher incomes were in fact growing at a much faster rate. And we found that this was actually true in rural areas. It wasn't just an urban phenomenon. So that was some, some good news. Um, this is what the map looked like overall um, for Southern Ontario. Um, the darker areas having a higher percentage of those creative jobs. And you can see that while they are concentrated um, very heavily in a lot of the urban regions, there are examples of more rural places that do in fact have a high propensity of these creative economic activities as well. And as you can see there, Prince Edward County um, is one of those places that certainly does have um, a much higher um, level of creative employment than a lot of its close neighbors. Um, and uh, Dan will certainly talk more about uh, some of the reasons as to um, why that is, and more specifically, uh, what exactly those kinds of economic activities that are happening actually are. Um, um, so when it comes to actually Prince Edward County itself, we can see that those, that creative category within Prince Edward County um, is certainly growing faster as well, uh, faster than the other types of, of um, employment. It's still not the, the most dominant category. Uh, the service types of work um, in Prince Edward County 
are still the largest group, but they are um, declining as creative um, type jobs are increasing. Um, just to give you an idea of sort of the breakdowns of types of uh, business establishments um, in Prince Edward County, um, we had a um, we borrowed a system of classifying um, industries into groupings of uh, different types of creative businesses. Um, you can see here some of the largest ones are photography, heritage, art, artists, public relations, marketing, museums and cultural industries, and so on and so forth. Just to give you an idea of the kinds of um, activities and businesses that are happening in Prince Edward County. Um, another issue that I, I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, was the, the age aging population, particularly in, in relation to rural areas. Um, this is something I've also done a fair, did a fair bit of work on um, in England as well. Um, and it's a consistent pattern that we see in a lot of national contexts where um, the rural areas tend to be getting much older than the, the urban areas. Um, we often think about, you know, we, we know that the aging population is going to present a lot of challenges. A lot of the time we're not thinking about the specific geography um, of that challenge. Um, and here we can see that in Prince Edward County has a much higher percentage of, of people um, year, age 65 and over as compared to Ontario as a whole. Um, and we look at, when we look at this in terms of migration patterns um, across age groups, um, there's a fairly stark pattern um, where we see younger people generally in their 20s um, with relation to this chart um, move into larger cities um, where we, and we also see people who are, say, 50 years and over, they tend to move to smaller places and rural areas. Um, so we're seeing this, this, this aging population um, more concentrated in rural areas, which presents many problems for things like service delivery, but also from an economic standpoint in terms of creative work and that sort of thing. And a big issue is how do rural areas retain um, and attract those those young people who are very important to the, to the economy and also important in terms of um, the local society as well and families and that sort of thing. Um, so just some of the, the key messages um, for rural areas in Prince Edward County that, that uh, I'd like to uh, convey. Um, I'd also like to um, say that within our, our um, project we have many um, sort of offshoot research programs going on as well. Um, I was in Newfoundland last month. Um, they have a fairly major project going on uh, with regards to the urban, or urban rural relationships in terms of the, the creative economy going on there as well. And there's some very interesting issues that Newfoundland is dealing with um, currently because they're starting to actually need an increase of, of people for the first time in a long time. And obviously, rural means very different things um, in different places. If you're near a city, it's one thing, but if you're sort of in remote Labrador, that's a, a whole other um, dimension that you, we need to be thinking about. Um, so just some of the, 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 the key findings. Um, from my own work, uh, rural and, and more peripheral areas um, suffer from that lack of sort of creative advantage of sort of dense, diverse networks and learning opportunities that are, are just sort of there. If you say go out on Queen Street in Toronto, there's just all this sort of buzz. But how do you find that in a, in a rural area? Um, so um, one of the ways to, to counteract that sort of that lack of that density of networks and networking opportunities is to make use of some, some of the unique local cultural and physical attributes of, of rural places. Um, so in Prince Edward County's um, example, wine, uh, the wine industry was a, a big catalyst in spurring a lot of subsequent um, economic development around creative industries. And that's a particular physical attribute that Prince Edward County has that it's taken advantage of. Um, another um, aspect to this is that um, there's probably a larger role for the public sector to play in, in the rural uh, creative economy in terms of building networks and maintaining networks. Um, in cities, a lot of the time these things can happen very organically and naturally. People just simply bump into each other literally on the street. In rural areas, 
maybe these meeting opportunities aren't quite as obvious. People aren't quite as aware. There's much greater physical distance between people and so on and so forth. So having some sort of 